it going everyone and welcome uh, I told you we were the next video was going to be on what it was going to be on so that's where we're going to pick up where I left off with this uh, this super NES uh, after we got it going and all that I told you what we were going to be doing and I showed you what we were going to be doing kinda I just showed you a bag of crap alright these are by Acclaim and are wireless controllers for the Super NES and these are a buddy of mine he asked me if I could fix them or if I wanted to fix them and do a video on them I said well sure let's let's I did kind of a preliminary look at them and this is what I had found We have battery damage on both of them. This one, in fact, this one's still got some goo in it. If I'm not mistaken, I think when he gave them to me, I, I took the batteries out. I mean, it it's already too late, but I, I didn't want them left in there and leaking all over everything. So we're going to start with this one and see what we can do about fixing. Fixing? Yeah, you know, fix. We're going to see what we can do about fixing them, not replacing. We are going to fix. Try anyway. Looks like we got four screws. I've never been in these. I've never been in anything like these. But I'm sure it's going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be a matter of us trying to figure out what we have to do to fix the battery connections. And of course, they are soldered in. So now I'm going to have to let my desolderer heat up. I mean, these should be pretty much the same as what a original Super NES controller is on the front side. We have our shoulder buttons. And they look pretty much the same, only we have a chip in here for our remote. They should be probably 2.4 gigahertz. Um, I'm thinking, but don't quote me on it. But uh, first thing I want to do is I'm, I want to get these con get these wires unsoldered, and maybe we can test them. And I'm just going to mark right up top there where the red goes. So in case this takes a while to try and do, we can put the wires right back on where they belong. It'll just be a lot easier if I unsolder the wires off of the battery holder, the back here, and then we can get at them and see if we can't uh, do something. Looks like we're probably going to have to make new battery connections. I'm thinking, maybe, maybe not, <clears throat> springs anyway, we're going to need springs to hold the batteries in, and I have a little uh, spring assortment from Harbor Freight that I think we can probably get some springs out of. Uh, what are we going to need? Looks like we're going to need about four four springs per controller because all of them are, are either rusted or are falling off. This one 
second one is so rusted. And if we're going to do three, we'll just do four. Okay, uh, let me wait till uh, my, oh, my soldering iron, my soldering station is heated up. Let me see if I can get you down here so you can actually see what the hell is going on. See if I can get these out of here. Let's see how are those in there? Are they just kind of pushed, pressed in there, or I don't see any rivet. In there, as far as no, it looks like they just kind of slide right down in there. I think the rust kind of has it holding in there a little bit. There's one of them. Let's see what we can, what we have to do at least to, you know, the, this part here, we can clean this up for the battery. But it's a spring, and it's riveted, 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 riveted in, or on. It is riveted on this little plate. So let me, let's see what... If we drill that rivet out, how are we going to hold the new spring on? Uh, I suppose we could we could put the spring through the hole so it sticks out the back side a little bit and then push it back down in and the plastic itself would hold you know, we put uh, like one half a coil through the back side and then push it back down in there and that may hold it. That's an option. Uh, if we try and solder onto it, I think it's going to weaken the spring too much. But I kind of like that idea. Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's see what we got to do here. Uh, would like to test this controller, you know, to see if it does work. Picked that up, it was ten dollars wherever he bought it. Uh, let, me, let me get some stuff set up here, and I think we can. We need, it should be about six volts. Alright, 
let me let me get some stuff set up and round it up and we'll let's try and test that first. All right, I'm gonna turn my uh, power supply to six volts. And there's a power supply right on my rework station. You know, it's one of those cheap ones, but you know, serves its purpose. And just because I want to, oops, I'm going to test test and see if we have 6 volts actually coming out of the power supply because I, you know, you don't really trust. We got, come on, yeah, see it's about five, six, five, eight, five, nine, yep, yeah, about six volts coming out of that. Uh, four triple A's, uh, those are a volt and a half, but normally they're, you'll get, oh, probably, 1.7 to 1.8 volts out of them. So I just figured 6 volts would be like uh, we have some batteries that are a little weak in it. Get up there. And we'll put put him in the front of her. Boy, it doesn't doesn't fit the greatest. There we go. Now let's see. Is there an on off? Yeah. See if we can flip this over without everything falling out of it. Yeah, we got a red light. Let's see. It's on one player, turbo, slow. I wonder if we need to be right in front of it in order for it to work. Let's start. Yeah, it works. I don't know if you can see, but yeah, it worky. All right, so now that we know that it works, <clears throat> now we can concentrate on fixing the battery compartments so it'll actually hold batteries. Where's that? There it is. All right, now on the, this little plate, there's the rivet that goes through it is just kind of peened over. It has like three little wings on the back side. And I'm thinking if we can get a hold of it and open it up we might be able to use reuse that little rivet but I'm not gonna that's a Phillips I'm not gonna hold out a whole bunch of hope I think we're gonna have to be doing something a little different to it's a 
almost like it's welded. And I don't want to, I don't feel like stabbing myself in the finger. Hmm. It's so thin that you can't get anything under it. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It, the spring goes on, and then that, that rivet goes through, and it's stamped down onto it. I wonder if I can... I can get that spring out from under it. I might have enough room on the back side to open up that. Okay, I see it's the spring itself is wrapped right around that rivet and then they put it in and, and peen it over and there's no way I'm gonna be able to get under that I mean I could I thought maybe if we could take it off Take the rivet off we could reuse it but I don't think we're going to be able to too much. There's one. And it's just it's so thin. I'm bound and determined to harpoon my finger. Come on. I'll tell you right now, that's not going to be an option of reusing it. We'll, have, we'll just have to come up with a, a better or a different way. There we go. Got it out. Now there's a little um, tooth, I guess you want to call it, 
on either side that when you push it down in it hooks so we can open them up a little bit again yeah all right let's see what we can come up with for a spring you see how tiny you know, it can be a little bit bigger as long as it doesn't touch, you know, it doesn't interfere with the other battery and and as long as it touches the bottom of the battery. You know, something like that. There's the old one. Hmm. See, I think that's about the smallest I have in here. What? Oh, there's your... I think that's what we're going to have to work with. For right at the moment. Now these are about... Let's see, I did find there's one over here that is still completely intact and there's one, two, three, four coils and we have one, two, three, four would be like in there and what's that leave on the other? One, two, three <clears throat> but I guess we can always stretch it out a little bit. Let's see. One, two, three, and you have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, I think that. Don't want to ruin my flush cuts. Now, if we put it down through that hole. Where the rivet was. No, we can't get it. Never get it lined up with it down through there. Nope. So we're going to have to attach this a different, some other way. How hard is this going to be to, to bend? Not too bad.
there's no way in hell I'm gonna be able to solder that at least I don't think but about the best best way is probably to solder it that's the rivet and then it's mangled <clears throat> yeah, I don't know okay let's let's see if we can solder a spring on here I think that's going to be our best bet is to solder it on and I have to get more than just a, a little bit of it we're going to have to have a coil or two soldered down on it really good okay. Let's see where's the one I bent a hook on it's this one right here what do you think <laughs> to goober it up and let's, let's see if we can tent it oh yeah Not quite a bit of it. What do you think? I'm going to need to wash this first. I try and set that back down in there uh, I think what I'm gonna do since I have the other controller to to see how every each one of these go I am going to remove this one might be a little a little harder to do and it's got a lot of a lot of corrosion on it <laughs> there's what's left of the spring oh 
what I was afraid of. It's got so much rust in it, it's got it pinned. That one That one we may be making a whole new one said I have the other one so this one doesn't look real healthy either in fact the rivet and everything just came right out of it that one we might be able to save won't know until we try and solder to it This one just needs cleaned. And that little one there, that one I think we can, I think we'll be all right there. And this one, can't see what I'm doing anyway. That one, we may be able to clean, clean that up and salvage that whole thing. But I need to wash this. But first, before I go do that, let's 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 see what happens to this. solder to stick to that. I may have to get something a little more abrasive to, to clean that. Hmm. All right, anyway, let me let me go wash this up so we can assemble as we're working.
Okay, got two of them made up. Let's see what see what happens. One. Now this one. This is the one that was. It's pretty pretty rough. Okay, there it is. Now the big thing. Will it hold batteries? And will it make connection all the way across? So let's let's see what happens. this dirty one just to keep them from falling out when I flip it over Ooh, don't lose that okay let's see what we got can you see that I hope so Okay, red, and there we go, 6.2 volts, yes, <laughs> take that you rusty nasty little critter, <laughs> yes I'm happy with myself alright. back out. Okay. Not the way it goes. Mm -hmm. Looks good to me. Not quite long enough.
Black.
All right, I got that. <clears throat> got that one controller all put back together, and I had my 6.2 volts on the back side of my battery pack. But when you went to use it, it wouldn't wouldn't work. But if you pushed on the batteries, then it would work. So I got to looking, and we have this one here. This is the one that has the red terminal on it. And you can see that the the center piece is rotted out. I when I cleaned it up, I seen that it was really, you know, there wasn't much left in there, and I should have done something with it then. But yeah, as always, I was in a hurry to get this done so I could get on to something else. But you end up spending more time because then you got to tear everything back down if you don't just take care of the problem when you first see it. And you won't have the problem when you get it all done. So what I am thinking, I'm going to try something first before... before I try and make another one. I'm hoping, you know, I can bridge it. Pretty much, almost bridge it. Bridge it? I don't know bridge it. But she can be a pain. I'm going to see if I can get enough solder on this. Too much there. And this one's pretty was pretty rusty, so I don't know if I can. Yeah, you know, hopefully that will. And I have a little piece of spring steel here off of another. I save this when I strip down. Can you see over here? Okay. When I strip down radios and, and and that, I always save the battery connections out of them. Because it gives you a perfect opportunity to make another one for another probably be too much and I don't know if I can nip the end off of this I don't I don't want it more so small it falls through the hole yeah I know there's a joke there just nip a little bit off of it This is going to be really fun. To try and put on there. I need to... Ah, come on. need to see if I can get this tinted and get some slobber to stick to it if I can and I might be able to lay it down on there and <clears throat> solder us a little little patch and like I said this it's pretty rusty so it may not want to stick 
Stieg. I got a pretty good goober on there. Like, okay, I give up. Where'd it go? It's stuck to my thumb. Can you see what the hell I'm gonna try and do here? Get him out of the way. Not the prettiest. But I do think that'll work. We just need so it'll so the battery will touch it. I may have a little too much solder on the edges. See if it'll go down in there. Pull him up a little. need another set of hands. Somebody want to hold that wire for me? And hold that other one out of the way. See, they're all, these ones are starting to fall out now. Let's see if I can't tighten, tighten those up too. This is starting to become a real, real job here. Putting these back together, fixing them.
Okay, there's some wee little tabs on either side of these. Yep, see that one's already broke because of it being rusty. If I have any more problems, I think we're going to have to sit down and make new which you can do too If you have to is <clears throat> it slides something down behind it you know if you have a I don't know something really small like a little piece of metal already you know it's a contact anyway so it's not like you're gonna make anything arc okay we're on too that light looks a lot brighter let me get that out of the way I'll get you backed up Ain't still nothing. There we go. Just had a battery that wasn't all the way down. Oops. Let's see if all of our functions work. Yep. <laughs> All right. Now we know that one works. Now let's, I'll test, let's see, we're on player one, so that should be player two controller. And let's, I'm going to have to see, that one I just put together. Uh, I wanted to get this one working, and then uh, we got that one, got the new springs and everything in it. That one's all put together. You've seen me do that. And now I just need to do a little bit of adjustment on the springs. Uh, the springs themselves are pretty big. So what I have to do is, uh, I wasn't thinking of this when I was putting them on, is I just take my needle nose pliers, get a hold of that spring, and I need to twist the center a little bit in so it contacts the center of the battery better. So let's... I'll work on this one and bring you back when I get that one going if I run into any other 
uh, difficulties with it. I'll bring you back and show you what the hell's going on with this one, and hopefully we can get this one going, and then we'll have a good set of cordless Super NES controllers. You know, I was looking for the on-off buttons on these all over the place. I mean, you have your on button, but there's no off button. But I noticed if you let them sit long enough, they, they shut off on their own. And you can see this is player one. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that little red light in there. Yeah. This is player one. And that's I think that. Oops. Hmm. Still having problems with player one. Click it all the way in. All right, let's see. Do I still? Yep, yeah, it's still that one. Seems like every time. a little bit more. Using a fiberglass pen. Clean that terminal up. Let's leave that out in case I need it again. Seems like every time I touch this last battery when it decides it wants to work. Mm -hmm. Select button. I still got one of them in here that's not making contact. The whole problem with trying to use old rusted terminal plates is it just does not like it. Mm-hmm. battery door off. Let's spin these a little bit. Nope, still nothing. Alright, this one has been a real, a real pain. Uh, I finally turn around and I, I just, I replaced that last spring. I thought it was good, but I think there was a lot of rust under the rivet and it wasn't letting me uh, take get full contact with it. So now let, let's see what we got. Let's see if this little guy wants to work. Told you a lot. Told you before. I'm not good at games. And I can fix them. Come on. And get them working. 
but I am not good at playing. Yes, we got a lot of got a heck of a storm going on. A lot of wind and rain, so you're going to hear a lot of rain. Takes me a little while to get used to this uh, controller for playing this. <laughs> oh well. Let's get through. You can see now both of them are working and now we have a nice I don't know what these are worth uh, I think they're worth more to to Dave the guy that owns them than what they are as far as you know money wise goes to anybody but they're ah, ah, but they work uh, like I said they're a claim dual turbo so I hope you like this video as much as I enjoyed making it this was a really nice repair on these took me a little while when you're messing with rust and, and corrosion it it takes takes a while to get through that type of stuff and get all the <clears throat> little corks out of it because of the rust and corrosion so I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, make sure you like and subscribe. See ya.